Amen. God is good. Amen. Come on. God is good. Amen. Amen. For those of you that are watching online, yes, the praise team had their coat on. Yes, I have my coat and my gloves on. Amen. God is good. Um, our, our, our furnace um, died today or took a break. I'm not sure which one. It might kick back on. It would say it took a break. And so, um, but, but, we, but we, we are not going to complain. Amen. We're not in the complaining business. God's blessed us. Amen. Press down, shaking together, run over. So we're not going to complain and make excuses why we can't praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Somebody give God a hand clap this morning. If you are excited to be here, you might be a little cold, but I declare that if you usher in the spirit of God, God will warm this room up. Amen. We don't need a furnace. We can have this Holy Spirit come and warm this room up. Amen. 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 I, 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 uh, Tori, if you can come here for a second. Where's Tori? If you can come here for a second. Amen. I, I, I watched the video, and unfortunately, we were not able um, to, to get the video for you. But I, but I heard it went viral, and so I want to describe it to you for a second, because and, and it, it moved me in my spirit. I saw it last night, so I didn't have a lot of time to get it to Jamie. But um, in, in, in the video, um, it, was a, it was a gymnastic meet, and, um, and a little girl, um, I think she was about nine, I think she was nine, and she was doing her routine. And so, you know, gymnastics, they always, they practice, and they practice hard. They're some of the, the hardest, you know, at practicing athletes that I've seen, more than football sometimes. And, and you know, they practice, and they practice, and, and they're, they're twisting, tumbling, back flip, front flip. Listen, I was a great athlete, but I'm not flipping anywhere. I, I might do a cartwheel, but there'll be no backflip. Like, I even went to the, to, to the trampoline, and they like, do a backflip. I'm like, ah, I'm not so sure about a backflip. I do a cartwheel. And I was watching the video, and in the video, all you see is the, is, is, is the beam. You see the beam. And, and, and I'm sorry, it wasn't a beam. I can't think what you call it, but something they, they jump, they push off of and jump onto. And a little girl, was, she was just running full speed. And she, she, boom, she hit it, and she flipped in the air. But it said she missed her mark. And when she missed her mark, the side of her foot hit the side of the mat, and she went falling to the side. And just as she was falling to the side, out of nowhere, her coach came and her coach caught her in midair. Like, just in midair. Like, like literally, like, hear what I'm describing to you. You can look it up later on, but, but it went viral. Literally, the coach was not anywhere to be seen. Come on, hear what I'm saying in the spirit. Like, the coach was nowhere to be seen. You, all, all you saw in the screenshot. Only thing you could see in the screenshot was a girl running. Or you could see the fans, but you, you couldn't see the coach. So you didn't know the coach was there. And the girl was running full speed. She wasn't running half speed, Pam. She was giving her her all. She had not a fear. She had not a care. She trusted that she can do what she needed to do. Because she had practiced it so many times. She had all the faith. She had all the trust. She wasn't a, a, a half Christian. She wasn't like half running. She wasn't half going at it. She was going at a full speed. She said, I trust and I believe in my full faith. And she, boom, she hit it. And then when she hit the side, she began to fall. And all you can hear is, oh my God. But just as she was beginning to fall, he caught her in midair. And he put her down to the side. And if you read the comment section, all it says is, coach seemingly comes out of nowhere. Just in the nick of time. Just when she needed him. He didn't come after she fell and hit her head. He came and caught her in midair. And I'm here to tell you today that most of us are not willing to take a leap of faith and do what God calls because we don't trust that God's going to catch us if we fall. It says she missed her mark. Listen, you're going to miss your mark. I miss my mark daily. I miss my mark weekly. I miss my mark. But just as I miss my mark, God's like, I'm going to catch you if you go ahead and just try. If you just take a leap of faith, I'm going to catch you. I just need you to leap. But most of us, we won't leap. We won't just give it our all. She was in the air just flying free. And when she began to fall, she didn't, she, if you watch the video up here, she didn't start doing all this. She just fell gracefully as if she knew. As if she knew that the coach who had been at every practice, the coach who had been late at practice with her, who had stayed early with her, is the coach she figured if he's always been there, then he's always. I don't know about you, but my God is omnipotent, which means he's all-powerful. My God's omniscient, which means he's all-knowing. 
My God's omnipresent, which means he's present at all places. So I, I, I remember, I remember, I, 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 didn't, I didn't talk to Tori beforehand, but Tori, just, just walk right here, Tori, for me. I remember there was a time when we were kids when daddy would stand here and then you would just tell, tell your daughter, your son, just jump. Just jump. Just jump. Just jump. Just jump. Close your eyes and just jump. Just jump. And we would just trust. We would just trust that, 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 that daddy's going to catch But Somehow, somehow, some way, as we get older, Rodney, somehow, some way, let me start, make it plain for you. Stay right here, baby. Just fall back. Just fall back. Somehow, go do it one more time. Just, just, just fall back. Just fall back. Fall, fall. Somehow, as we got older, when we weren't this age anymore, we stopped trusting daddy. We, 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 we want to, we wanna, I, I don't really feel the step right there with my finances. In my marriage, I'm not really feeling that right there. Like, pastor, that was a great word. I'm really motivated, pastor, but I haven't applied the word. Come on, I, listen, I might not have been here physically, but I heard the word from last week, and I'm willing to bet most of us didn't even apply the words. Oh, that was phenomenal. But you're still, you're still trying to get a feel for where it's at. God said, just fall. I'll be there to catch you. Don't you trust me? Don't you believe in me? I was so pumped, and I was so excited when I saw the video. I was sitting... I, <laughs> I was sitting still. I can't really go into where I was sitting at last night. But I was sitting still, and I was, I, I was like, God. First lady, I said, God, hey, God, we back again. God, we back again. And, and I, I'm going to be real. You Listen, Pastor Thomas is our senior pastor. I'm an associate, so I had to call my big brother, not my pastor. I called my big brother. I said, E, when you, when you have to go do this and go through this, I said, what do you do? He said, T, let me tell you. I said to myself, it's not unto death. He, he, he said it's not unto death. So when I was sitting there, DD and I was sitting there, I said, okay, God, here we go again. And God said, you're right, here we go again. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. You didn't hear what I said. You can sit down. I said, God, here we go again. He says, you're right, here we go again. Because when you go through something again, I'm going to save you again like I've always done. I have not changed. If I was there yesterday, I'll be there today. If I'm there today, I'll be there tomorrow. What you worried about? Just jump. Just jump. Take a leap of faith. If you can't leap for me, why do you expect me to leap for you? You want God to leap, to, to leap and save you, but God said you won't even leap and trust me. Oh, come on, somebody. God said, TJ, if you want me to leap, leap, leap into your life and bless your finances, I need you to leap into my oh, I need you to leap and trust me and give me your finances back. I need you to give me your wife if you want me to give it back to you. I just want us to trust God more. I just want us to leap more. Like, like, like Pam, I didn't even tell Tori what she was doing, but, 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 but can I make it plain for you? I, I knew who to call up here, Auntie Moni. Like, I, it's a lot of little, little kids in here that I love and call me Uncle TJ, Auntie Moni, but I, I, Didi, you hear what I'm saying first? Like, I knew who to call up here because something, I don't know why, maybe Tori can tell you, but something about me and Tori's relationship, I don't know what it is. Like, listen, I don't want to put her on blast, but when she gets in trouble, when she acts up, her mother calls me to talk to her. And something about when we talk, even when I chastise her, even when I tell her she's wrong, and I tell her she needs to get her stuff together, and she begins to cry, there's something about a relationship. Oh, you're not hearing me. Because we have a relationship, Moses, she can, I can call and she don't even know what I'm going to ask her to do. And I can tell her, just Tori, just fall back. And she's just going to fall back because of our relationship. She's willing to leap because she knows I've always been there for her. Even when I'm chastising her, I've been there for her. And I'm here to tell you this morning, we got to stop playing church. Stop just singing. Stop just preaching. Stop just hearing the word. You have the best one of us speaking in the world coming here preaching on a weekly basis. And we're getting the word and we're not applying the word. I'm scared. God says, I know you're scared. It's okay. Just leave. You don't got to be without fear. God wants you to act in spite of your fear. You didn't hear what I just said. You don't have to be without fear. Yes, we have fear. God said, okay, cool. You got fear. Praise God. Give me your fear and leap anyway. Just leap. Just leap. I declare to you that Trey, my namesake, Anthony Tyler III, is blessed 
in terms of sports, not just because he's fast and he's strong, but he saw me do it before he did it. And because he saw me leap and do it, he believes that he can do it. And so I declare that if I take that beyond sports on Timon and I say, if I show him a better man, then he'll be a better man. If I show him a better father, then he'll be a better father. If I show him a better husband, then he'll be a better husband. And then they will follow him. Then they will follow him. And they will see it. But God said, sorry, son, you have to leap and show them how to trust me. Because once they see you trust me, then they can trust you. So when their mother's going through it, whatever their mother may be going through, or when their father's going through it, they can trust, you know what? Well, daddy took care of mommy in this situation, so you know what? He gonna take care, he gonna, if he did it before, he can do it again. If he did it before, he can do it again. It's not unto death, so if it's not unto death, why don't you just trust me one more time? So forgive me, I'm just trying to get warm. My toes are cold, my, my fingertips are cold. And Jamie comes and said, we have no heat. I said, that's cool, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna bring the heat. I'll bring it with me, I don't wanna have drought, I'll bring it with me. I'm gonna praise my Lord, because my Lord's worthy to be praised. I'll preach with gloves on and a coat on, I'll be here, I'll show up. I've been in the pulpit with one person in the, in the congregation. God said, just do my will. I need you to be available, TJ. God, I'm available, I'm reporting the duty. I may not sound the best. I may not look the best. I may not be on national television, but God, I'm a servant. I'm here to serve. I'm available. Are you available? Are you available? Are you available? No rock will crowd in my name. My daddy woke me up this morning. He woke my wife up this morning. He woke my children up this morning. So therefore, praise will continually be on my lips. And so whatever you're going through this morning, I declare when you walk through them doors, you ought to be coming through them doors, clicking your feet together, clapping your hands, stumping your feet, because daddy woke you up this morning. I'm sorry, I'm just, I, I apologize. I'm just, I'm just a little pumped up. To, I don't know why, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but I'm just a little excited this morning. Hey Amen. Is that okay? Is that, is that okay? Because I know when I go to a football game, Pam, I'm excited. I know when I go to a basketball game, I'm like, that's a foul. Call the foul. Call the foul. Right? That's a foul. You cheating us out of the game. But Daddy said, why you don't get excited for me like that? Why you don't get excited for me when, when, when you see the enemy hurting that, that young man? Like, oh, God, call the foul. God, do you see the devil? God, like, I got you, son. Foul. You want to scream and shout when somebody cuts you off, somebody does you wrong. But what are you going to do for daddy because all you think daddy had done for you? For God so loved the world that he gave. I'm not even going to finish it, but I just want to, I, I, I want to, I want to underline the word gave. Pastor gave a phenomenal word last week. I listened to the word online. And, and for God so loved the world that he gave. Somebody said gave. Yeah. Come on, somebody said gave. Yeah. So today I, I'm going to be short. I'm going to keep you warm. I want you to focus on the word gave. And what I, I, and not give. I know, I know, trust me, I know it's not proper English, but gave. What, what, have you, what have you given God in the last 24 hours? What have you given God in the last 48 hours, last 72 hours? Like, what have you given God? Because the word says that for God so loved the world that he gave. And so love is an action, it's a verb. We haven't said it before. So when you love, you don't just say, I love you. You show that you love by giving. And you give an abundance of something that you don't, that you don't have an abundance of. <laughs> Hallelujah. You give an abundance of something you don't have an abundance of. So if you have an abundance of it and it's not a sacrifice, then are you truly giving? Because it's not equal giving, it's equal. It's not equal giving, it's equal. So if you have an abundance of it, are you truly giving your all? If you got 10 and you giving one, are you really giving to this person who has five and is giving five? Are you giving your all? Are you taking a leap and say, God, I give you my all? So there's a story about a young girl whose dad got upset with her because she wasted all the wrapping paper on Christmas. And not just any, you know, you, you know how when your mama or your wife, she buy that good wrapping paper, like that expensive kind. And you better make sure you cut it just right. There should be no leftover. Don't, don't waste no wrapping paper. And he was upset and he chastised her because she had used so much to wrap a gift. And he said, don't waste the good wrapping paper because they, were, they weren't very financially 
well off. And, and he said, don't waste the wrapping paper. And she said, Daddy, I'm sorry. I was wrapping your gift. And he, he calmed down. He said, okay, well, just be careful with how much you use. And he wrapped the gift. And, and I'm sorry, she wrapped the gift. And she wrapped it and put it under the tree. And then on Christmas morning, she said, Daddy, open your gift first. And, and he ran over and said, okay, I'll open it. And he went over, he tore it. He opened it up and there was a box. And he opened the box and there was nothing in it. And then he got upset. He said, don't you know when you give somebody a gift, there should, should be something inside the box. You shouldn't give an empty gift. And, and she began to cry. And she said, Daddy, please stop yelling at me. He said, no, you wasted my wrapping paper. And then you, you, you wrapped a gift when there's nothing in the gift. And she said, Daddy, please, please, Daddy, calm down. He said, no, we don't have money to waste money like that. And she said, Daddy, shh. He was taken back because his daughter had never shushed him before. She was about nine, ten years old, and she put her hands on his lips, and she said, Daddy, shh. And he, she, said, she said, Daddy, just listen. There is a gift inside of it. I blew kisses inside the box, Daddy. And the father began to cry. He, he began to realize what, that he had just went off on his daughter because while she didn't have anything to put in it, she put everything that she had, which was her love, she blew kisses in it. And I'm here to tell you this morning that the greatest gift you can give daddy, that's something that you can see, something that you can be. No, hear what I just said. The greatest gift that we can give daddy, is that's something that you can see, something that you can be. Daddy's not concerned with the tangible stuff. Here's my iPad. Here's my wall. Daddy said, I want you to be something, and I can't see that, but I can see it on the inside of you. The world can't see what you're giving Daddy on a consistent basis. She blew kisses in the box. She said, Daddy, I give you all my love. I give you all my heart. There's nothing that I can find at Hallmark that equates to my heart and my love, Daddy. I blow kisses in the box. So when you open the box, every time you open it, the gift keeps giving. It doesn't rush. It doesn't tarnish. It doesn't get old. I give you my love, Daddy, on a consistent basis every single day. So the greatest gift you can give Daddy is not something that you can see, something that you can be. And Pastor preached about being prosperous, being productive, producing on a consistent basis. But I said, Daddy, how come I'm not producing the way I want to produce in every area of my life? She said, Daddy, how come I'm not producing? He said, Daddy, how come I'm not producing? Daddy said, the reason why you're not producing is because you're not available. We all have gifts, but we all don't produce the same. All God's children are born with gifts, but not all God's children produce, pressed down, shaking together, running over. And Daddy told me, I prayed about him. Daddy said, because you're not available in every single area, that's why you're not producing in every single area. The greatest ability is availability. Are you available? Because when you're not available, then God can't use you. If God can't use you, you can't produce, press down, shaking together, running over. Somebody say availability. Let me make it plain for you. Luke 10, 38, 38, 40, 38 through 42. And Jesus and his disciples were on their way. He came to a village where a woman named Martha, 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 Martha. She opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. I'm going to pause right there. Hallelujah. It's not something you can see, it's something you can be. She sat at the Lord's feet. Listening to what he said, but somebody say, but, but Martha was distracted. Listen, 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 listen. What if I told you the enemy is what your enemy think, what you think it is? The enemy is distraction. Like if you can get focused on what God's asked you to do and you're not distracted, there's no devil in hell that can stop you. You're distracted by this, by this, by that. God said, if you would just focus. What did, what, let me back up. What did Jesus say when, when he was young? He was 13. He said, I must be about my daddy's business. That's called focus. He allowed his mother and his father and his family to go ahead of him. He stayed back knowing he would get in trouble. And he didn't care about getting in trouble because he was focused. He wasn't distracted. Too many of us are distracted. Come on, somebody. Listen, I, I, I love it. I was talking to, to my boy. He said, Dad, Jamie got the camera set up in the church. And, and sometimes the camera would be looking back at the audience. <laughs> And, if you, and, you, and, you, you, and when the cameras look back and you're on your phone like, oh, okay, let me retweet that, Facebook. Oh, praise God, Pastor. Amen. Like Pastor bringing a fire word. We online and you sitting there, you scrolling. Are you sitting there falling asleep? God said, you sleep right now. Can't you even stay woke for a moment? Mm, does that sound familiar? 
Did I sound familiar? Did I sound familiar? Jesus over there praying. He about, he about to die on the cross. He come back. They sleep. You ain't available, bro. You, 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 you want to roll with me. You want to hang with me. And I go and pray because I'm, I'm about to be betrayed. And I come back and you over there sleep. You're not even available. You sleep. You sleep. You can't even stay woke for a moment. Listen to the way Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. Can I tell you that when you focus on what God will, what, what God will have you to do and be what God will have you to be, then you take less time preparing for things because God's going to take care of it for you. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Now, let's pause right there. Now, I grew up in a military household. I ain't never told my dad, tell Andre to help me. So I don't know where she got that, she got that spirit from. It's not of God. But she's talking to Jesus like, tell her to help me. I'd be like, whoa, are like, you talking to, to Elohim? Like, you, El Shaddai, you talking? Okay, just want to be on the same page here. Tell her to help me. Explanation point. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things. But few things are needed, or indeed only one. Somebody say only one. Hey, listen, you don't got to get excited. I'm just giving you the word of God. The word of God said, but few things are needed. Then he, then he would only say, but only one. But only, Auntie Moni, but only one. God said, TJ, you can do all this preparation. You can run here, you can run there. You can post this, you can post that. You can do this, you can do that. But just, can you just, can you just do one thing for me? Can you just, somebody say one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it, is, it, and it will not be taken away from her. Mary, like, you can prepare all you want to prepare, but I'm going to be available. I'm just going to sit at daddy's feet. What daddy's going to do, daddy, when I sit at daddy's feet, daddy can tell me what I need to do. While you're running around making preparations, you don't even know, daddy, like, you don't even need to, even need to prepare that, because if you cut my feet, then I already got that taken care of. We spend so much time and energy doing things that God says you don't even got to do. Because if you come to me, you, t- you would learn that I've already taken care of it. You, worry, you run around worrying, complaining, and fretting, and you blood, your blood pressure rising, TJ. Just come sit at my feet. Only one thing, son. Just sit at my feet. Just sit at my feet because you're going to, you, listen, you're going to miss the mark anyway. Amen, ouch. You, you, listen, you, I'm not trying to be negative, but you're going to miss it. You're not. Is anybody in here perfect? You gonna miss the Bruce, Bruce. You know me, Bruce, from high school. You know how I used to be, Bruce. TJ, you gonna miss the mark anyway. So if you gonna miss the mark, son, just just run full speed and just. And then if you fall, TJ, just just. Oh, oh, you you you, you didn't catch it. You didn't catch it. I, I had to climb up. In order to take a leap, I had to put the work in. And even though I left and I might have failed, I, you, you didn't catch it. I didn't wander over here. I didn't wander there. I turned right back around and I went right back up. And I did it again. Delayed obedience is disobedience. I didn't delay it. I said, God, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to keep doing it until you tell me to stop because I'm at your feet. I want to be available. Because I know if I'm not where I'm supposed to be, Pam, and I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing, Somebody's not being blessed. Do you know that your birth is the answer to somebody's prayer? Like somebody was praying back in 1980. Oh, yeah. can, I, can I be playing for a second? In 1980, somebody was praying. They said, said we, got, we got all these athletes who getting in trouble, going to jail, fighting, doing X, Y, and Z. We, 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 just, we, we, we need somebody to go through it and then come out of it. And then God said, okay, I got you. 19, September the 18th, 1981, Anthony Tyus Jr. I'm going to let you play football, TJ. I'm going to let you play football since you were six years old. I'm going to let you go through all that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take you all the way there, Auntie Moni, just right there. And I'm, I'm going to take it from you. Since you were six years old, I, God allowed me to play football since I was six years old, all the way up to my, my, my mid late 20s, and then, whew, I'm like, whoa, God, hold on. I didn't put the work in. You reap what you sow. You do some, but you're not always going to reap what you think you're going to reap. 
you're going to reap what I want you to reap. So you've been sowing, and I'm going to give you a harvest, but that's the harvest you expect. It's a harvest that I need for you to bless my people. So I'm not going to give you the NFL, but I'm going to give you the kids who go to the NFL so you can get them cared so they can be better men for my kingdom. So you are answered to a prayer, but if you're not available, I can't use you. If you're not available, I can't use you. Repeat after me, if I'm not available, repeat after me, if I'm not available, God can't use me. If I'm not available, God can't use me. And then I'm at the enemy's. What would you say if I told you what I've come to learn in my prayer is that we're always being used by someone? And if you're not being used by God, then who are you being used by? If you're not praising, then what are you doing? If you're not worshiping God, then who and what are you worshiping? If you're not available to God, then who are you available to? I say it all the time. Yes, God has given me the gift of, of charisma and the, gift, and the gift to be funny and the gift, and that's a gift, but it can also be a curse. God said, I didn't give you the gift of charisma to, to hit on girls. I didn't give you the gift of charisma to be like the next L Cool J trying to be cool. Ladies love TJ. That's not why I gave you that. I gave you that to be in the pulpit. I gave you that to go to schools and change people's lives. That's why I gave you that. But you're using it the wrong way because you're not available to me. You're available to me. The enemy can't do nothing. The enemy can't do nothing to you. He don't have the power to. He wanted to deceive you. He wanted to distract you so he can destroy you. So enemy is in, the, the devil like, all I need you to do is be available to me. Just give me an hour. Just give me an hour. Give me 30 seconds. Oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. Give me, listen, you, you know my story. Somebody lost their life in less than 30 seconds, and although I didn't commit the murder, I didn't just come in and stop it. I just want to be plain. Can I, can I be plain? Can I be plain? Like, 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 like I still have nightmares. The, 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 the young, young man, I won't go into detail, but he lost his life. He was no further than that speaker right there. He lost his life, and I was standing there, and you know what? I didn't get in, and I didn't stop it. Who was I available to, Bruce? Are you available to God on a consistent basis? Few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better. And it will not be taken away from her. When you choose what is better, God will not take it away from you. Amen? Amen. So I, 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 I was listening to a story of a man. He was on an airplane. And he was sitting on the airplane. It was, it, was a, it was a crowded airplane. And on the airplane, what happened was there was a bat on the airplane. Now, I don't know about you, but I hate bats. And the airplane had not taken off yet. It was sitting on the runway. And, and, and the, guy came, the pilot came over. Ladies and gentlemen. There is a bat on the plane. Um, we're going to keep the cockpits closed so we're safe up here, so don't worry about us. Um, you guys, just sit tight. We got somebody coming who's going to remove the bat from the plane. But we're going to stay up here, and we hope you guys are okay. Like, <laughs> oh, you're going to keep the cockpit closed, huh? <laughs> like, can we get off? And you cannot get off. Everybody, be steady. It's going to be okay. So the bats just flying around the plane, and they, they wait. You know how long it takes for somebody to come. Like, that, that, that special person is like 10 hours away. And they're sitting there on, on the plane, Pam, and just waiting for people to come get the bat, just waiting, just waiting. And then, and then, then this, this guy, everybody's going crazy, yelling, oh, my God. I don't, and somebody says, I don't want to die. As soon as one person says, I don't want to die, the plane goes into panic. Oh, my God, we're going to die. Like, whoa, what, what, what? Just, just one word. One word changed the dynamics of the whole entire plane. And there was one man on that plane who was not in panic. He was just sitting there. The flight attendant came up and said, sir, you, you seem calm. Why are you so calm? Everybody else is going crazy. This is a story that I, that I heard, and, and, and it's a true story. And the guy looked at the woman, he said, because I'm Batman. And she like, whoa. <laughs> We're going to need mental health down here, too. We got a guy over here tripping. He didn't have no costume, but he was like, and he said it in the voice, like, because I'm Batman. And then when he said it, it was a kid about two rows back who heard it. 
A little little six year old kid. He heard him say. He heard him say he's Batman. And little kid jumped up. He got, said, "Everybody, calm down." Five year old kid. Said, Everybody, calm down. Everybody like, whoa, what was going on? Everybody stopped. Like, whoa, what's going on? He said, "Everything's gonna be okay." Like, wow, this little kid got. He's, he's confident. Everything's gonna be okay. And like, his mom was pulling. Sit down, Johnny. He said, no, mom, everything's gonna be okay. It's like Batman's on the plane. Batman's going to take care of everything. Everything will be okay. And would you believe, true story, would you believe that within a matter of two or three minutes, everybody calmed down? People went into panic when somebody said, I don't want to die. People calmed down when a little boy said, everything's going to be okay. Just calm down. The fire attendant came back to the man. He's like, you know you're going to have to get that bat, aren't you? He's like, yeah, I'm going to have to get that bat. But I tell you that story while it's funny. I tell you that story because, Pam, it, it moved me in my spirit because what I realized is that when you are available to God, you think differently. And when you think differently, you speak differently. And when you speak differently, you can change the dynamics of a room just by your words. You can bring it down or you can bring it up. And a five-year-old boy calmed everybody down on the plane by simply saying, everybody calm down. Because he believed that Batman was on a plane. And because he knows who Batman is according to what he watches and what he listens to, he knows that Batman is a superhero. So when you know who your daddy is by what you watch, what you listen to, you know that your daddy can show up and show out. So when something's going wrong, you can say, everybody calm down. God is here. You can still say, everybody calm down. I know we can't pay the mortgage or rent, but calm down. My daddy is here. I know the doctor says it's not going to work out, but everybody calm down. My daddy is here. I know that my daughter's acting up, but everybody calm down. My daddy is here. If you believe in your daddy and that he's El Shaddai, that he's Jehovah Jireh, the Lord's my provider, you can tell him to say, everybody calm down. Calm down, Jamie. Calm down. Calm down. It's going to be okay. My daddy's here. Let me t- listen, listen, listen to me carefully. I, Jamie, I'm sorry. I, I gave Jamie all these slides. I'm not even getting there. Y'all forgive me. I'm just being led by the Spirit today. Listen to me carefully. Y'all know my, my niece who came to live with me when, when, she was, when she was 15 years old, she was running away. She was using drugs. She was acting a fool. And I thought to myself, God, what's going to happen with her? What's going to happen with her? I tell you right now, my, my, my niece, we sent her back to her mother. And she went back to her mother. She got herself together. She finished high school. She went to college. She graduated with honors. She got a job. She got a place to live. She bought a car. This is the same girl who was running away from my house, was gone for three days straight. And I remember waking up when she was gone for three days straight, and I had to preach a sermon. And I, and I said to myself on morning, I said, God, I can't leave my niece because I don't know where she's at. She's been gone for three days. And God said, Tia, just go do what I called you to do. He said, but God, not even a senior pastor. He said, no, you told Pastor Thomas that when he couldn't be, that you would be available. So I need you to report to duty, TJ. I said, God, I'll report to duty. And I had to call my sister and tell her that I was, she said, have you found her? I said, I haven't found her. She was gone for three days. I said, I haven't found her. And I had to tell her, I said, she said what are you about to do? She said, you're going to look for her. I said, no, I'm going to church. And she got quiet until morning. It was, so, it was hard for me to tell because she, she gave Amara to me to take care of. And so it was my responsibility. So how can I tell my big sister that, that I'm leaving the, the city to drive an hour and a half to go preach to a congregation? Like, how, I, how can I get the words to tell her that I'm not even looking for your daughter? And she said, you going where? I said, I'm, I'm going to church, Toy. I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I, this is what God told me to do. I came to church. I reported to duty. I came to church. I preached the word. I got in the car. I drove home. And when I, when, I, when I drove home, hear me clearly, when I drove home, I had the boys in the car. And I had Vliss in the car. And I said, okay, I'm about to go look for her. And God said, no, take your family home first. I'm like, God, like, she's been gone. I already went to church, God. He said, no, take your family home first. I was like, all right, God, I'm going to be available. Whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to sit at your feet, God. Because I'm, I'm, I, I can be looking. I, I can be caught up in preparations, Martha. I can be preparing to find my niece. He said, no, take your family home first. I was like, all right, God, I'll take her home. I took my family home. I said, okay, God, can I go look for her now? Is that cool, God? God said, go look for her now. And I got in the car, started driving. I kid you not. God said, turn left. Turn right. Go straight. Turn left. In less than five, less than ten minutes, I looked for her for three days. Hear, hear what I'm saying. I looked for her for three days, Maurice. For three days, I looked for her. Three days. But when I went to church, I preached the word. 
I got in my car. I took my family home. I found her in less than 10 minutes, walking on the street with one shoe on. Now, God said, if you just be available to me and do what I called you to do, I'll take care of yours. You take care of mine, I'll take care of yours. Oh, you hear me? I said, you take care of mine, I'll take care of yours. So then when I got the call two, three days ago, Aunt Didi, I got the call that said, Amara's in the hospital. She's giving birth two and a half months early. Her blood pressure's up. Her vitals are not looking right. It's not looking good. And I got the call. I said, God, if you did it before, I'm going to need you to do it again. I said, God, if you did it before, I'm going to need you to do it again, God. She's been through so much, God. That's my baby girl. She might be my niece, but she's like a daughter to me. God said, son, just be available, and I will take care of her. I told you I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I prayed about it. Now, you know me, I'm I'm I'm, I'm transparent. V said, T.J., are you worried? I said, I know I shouldn't be. I'm a pastor, but I'm worried. I said, I'm worried, but I trust God. Sound crazy. That sound crazy, don't it? Sound crazy. Listen, I, I'm not the guy going to lie to you. I was worried, but I trust God. I can, can you be both? You can be both. I was worried, and I was trusting. I was worried, and I was, but I would rather do that than just be worried. I would rather be back and forth and be say, God, I'm going to tell you the truth. God, listen, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, my whoopings were, were, were less, less harsh when I told the truth. <laughs> Did you do it? Yes, sir. I'm going to whoop you. But you, won't, you only going to get a couple because you told the truth. So I want to tell God, God, I'm worried. Like, I trust you, God, but you're making it kind of hard. Can you, like, help me with the trust part? God said, you being honest, I got you. I was praying, first lady, that she wouldn't give birth to the baby because the baby's not due to May 30th. And I was praying that she wouldn't give birth and that the baby would be able to be in there. And I got a text from my sister and sister and it said, they're not gonna have to, she's not going to have to give birth. I'm like, praise God, God showed up and showed out. Hour and a half later, I got a text. It said she's going she's to have to give birth. I'm like, God, you just, I thought we just, I thought we just worked this out. So I stayed up. I was up all night. My phone was vibrating. I was looking at text messages. And I got a message two days ago that she gave birth to the baby. And not only did she give birth to, that, that, to her baby girl, but she gave birth to her baby girl. I don't know how much you guys know about preemies, but most preemies don't breathe on their own from what I've been told when they give birth. Her daughter came out breathing on her own. She cried. Her lungs are working perfectly. She gave birth to a healthy baby. And all I can say is, God, God, I, I'm be honest, God, I, I didn't see. I tell you, you remember how it was. I, 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 I be honest, God, I, I didn't see. I was gonna be honest with you, I, I just didn't see how what she was that she can ever be. And God said, you're not supposed to see it. Amen. Just trust me. Because according to the word, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, nor has it entered into the heart. So you might not be able to see how you're going to get out of what you're in right now, but God said, you don't got to see it. Just see me. Oh, you hear what I said. You don't got to see it. God said, just come see me. If you just come see me, you don't got to worry about seeing it. Just see me. Focus on me, Martha. Focus on me and just see me, and I will see you through. I will see you through. I'm sorry, Jamie. I, I, I know, Jamie, I didn't even get to third, fourth, fifth slide, Jamie. Go, go to the last slide, Jamie. Get, 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 go to the last slide for me, Jamie. Listen to me very carefully. I'm, I, 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 I want to bring this home. I, I, I don't want to drag this out. And, and I just, the, the, the Spirit of God, hear me carefully. We're not overcome by the enemy. We're overcome by too many options. I know that's a hard word to receive, but. Hear me clearly. I'm going to break it down for you. We're going to get out of here. We're not overcome by the enemy. I, I, listen, until when I studied it, I, Maurice, I studied it, and I was studying. I was like, God, you know, the enemy made me do this. The enemy made me do this. Like, no, the enemy didn't make you do anything. I'm like, God, well, well, well Adam and Eve, how come you didn't want them to eat from the tree? Because God didn't want them to have options. Because all they knew was the truth. 
The word of God says that Adam walked with God all they just walked, they were just walking, just chilling, hanging out together, sitting in the hammock together, drinking tea together. They were just chilling together. But as soon as they ate from the tree, they was no longer available. They was hiding. He said, What? He said, Adam, where are you at? When God asks where you at, it's not because he don't know, it's because you're not available. Where you at, Adam? We was walking together. Oh, now you, you got eyes now. Come on, for those of you who have kids, say, ah, when your kid turned two and they realized they had options, things changed when they had options. But when they were one, when they were one and a half, maybe, when they were young, they didn't think they had options. They did whatever mommy and daddy said. But when they had options, they learned the word no, things began to change. They call them terrible tools. So many of us adults are still in a terrible two phase. We got all these options and choices. God said, but only... Only one. We talked about it on the prayer line. I'll close, you, I'll close you with this. The lion's the king of the jungle. The lion knows what it is. And because it knows what it is, it's that every single day of the week. A lion will not eat grass even if it's starving to death. It will not eat grass because it eats meat. That's what it does. It has standards. And the problem with many Christians and the problem that we got to get above is we got to stop moving the finish line. We got to stop changing the standard. We have to have a standard and stand on that standard no matter what. We have to have a standard. That lion is about to die. You can see his rib cage. All it has to do is eat the grass. All it has to do is eat grass. But the lion says, I will not eat grass. I will not fold. I will not give in. I'm a man of God. I'm reporting the duty. If I have to die, I'm going to die on my standards. A lion knows that every single night it does not capture its prey. There's another night that it might not wake up the following morning. But every night, the lion hunts. Every night, the lion hunts. It lays in the grass. It basks in the grass. But it will not eat grass. It's going to do what it was created to do. And my question to you this morning is, will you do what you were created to do? Will you be available to God mentally? Will you be available to God emotionally? Will you be available to God financially? Will you be available to God on a consistent basis? For those of you that may know, and I won't go into detail, but I've worked out for a very long time and I consider myself pretty physically fit. And I went to the doctor a while back and I got diagnosed with high blood pressure. And the doctor said, are you stressed? I said, no, I'm not stressed. I'm a pretty high strong individual, but I'm not stressed. And I went home, and I began to talk to my wife, Auntie Moni. And I began to think about Chris, First Lady. And I, and, 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 and I like, I know in my family that, that I'm the major breadwinner. I know that my boys and my wife depend upon me. So I'm like, God, I'm productive. God, I'm producing. Like, I'm, I'm working Three, four, five, I got five streams of income like I'm producing. But God said, but if, if, if something happens where I remove you, are your kids going to be okay? Do you have to go to work in order to produce? Like, have you done something? I don't know about you, but I heard a sermon. I wasn't here, but I was here for the sermon. You might have been listening, but I was listening, and it hurt me. It cut me. I when the pastor was preaching. See, I took notes because I'm going to apply what he said. Y'all just listen and getting excited. I'm not trying to get excited. I'm trying to get new, renewed. I ain't trying to be pumped up. Woo! I'm done with that. I'm beyond that. That don't change anything. You have to change something to change something. You can't just get excited. You can't just go praise God. That's phenomenal. Okay, well, go be phenomenal then. It hurt me first. Like, I said, man, like, if, 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 if God were to take me right now, what am I leaving behind for Anthony Tyus III? Do I got to be at a specific place in order for them to be blessed? If I, if I go leave right now and I die, are they going to be taken care of? I'm saying, you know what, God? I got, I, got, I, got, I got you. I got you. I got you. I got to turn it up. I got to level up. 
Because, 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 because I figure I got to do X, Y, and Z, Pam. I got to go do this. I'm preparing. I got to go do this. I got to go work this. I got to work that. God said, son, just sit down. Just be a, you, 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 your, your finance is not available to me, TJ. But once you make your finances available to me and you sit at my feet, once you make your, once you make your diet available to me, like you can have a, you can have a, you know, you can six pack, the biceps, triceps, you can, yeah, you're going to look real sharp in that casket. They're going to bury you, bury me with a tank top, Bruce. Man, TJ, swole, look up in the casket. But on the inside, God does not judge men by the outside. God judges men by the inside. What's your character like? What's your diet like mentally? What's that like spiritually, physically? What's your diet like? Is your diet killing you or is your diet elevating you? So today, we're not going to close with, a, with an altar call. Today, it's a call to action. Today is a call to action. So if you're in a sanctuary today, and anything in this word has hit you, I need you to stand to your feet. And I need you to close your eyes. I need you to think about the sermon last week, the word today. And I need you to ask yourself, what are you going to do differently? How are you going to apply the word? How are you going to make your finances available? When you, when you go home today, don't go home excited. Go home and take notes. Go home and write it down. You have to write the plan down. The word God says write it down, make a plan so they can run towards the mark and not get worried. Hear me carefully. Number one, how are you going to make your finances available? Number one, number, number two, I'm sorry, how are you going to make your, 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 yourself available emotionally? Available physically. Like, how are you going to make your diet available to God? Like, write it down. And once you write down, how are you going to make it available? I want you to write down, what are you going to do every single day? What are the steps? Because hear me clearly. If you don't write it down, and you don't look at it, you're not going to do it. Pastor and I are not here just to preach to you for you to get excited. God has not given me a word to give to you for you to be excited. God has given me a word to change me and to change you. And if you're not changing, what are we doing? You got to look better physically. You got to eat better. You got to drink better. You got to think better. You got to act differently. Because if we're not changing, then we're just playing church. Father God in heaven, you see your people, Father. I love you, Father, and I praise you, Father. I'm asking you to help me, Father, to be a better man, to be a better father, to be a better husband, to be a better pastor, Father. Help me to be a better child, Father. I want to do what you would have me to do, when you would have me to do it, where you would have me to do it, Father. I believe that we are all answered to a prayer, Father. Help us to be like the lion, be the kings and queens you called us to be. We will not lower our standards. We sit at your feet. I am available to you because I know in my availability, I'm able to produce the way you would have me to produce. I'm done. I am done being a consumer. I want to be a producer. So I give you everything because I know in your hands, everything is blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.